everyone, and welcome back to the Left Lane Reviews. To my left sits Volvo's take on the luxury subcompact SUV market. It's named the XC40 and slots right underneath the massively popular XC60. Now it's Volvo's beautiful, aggressive body style and lines and paired with the Thor camera beam headlights that make this vehicle stick out in today's market. Now, powering the XC40 is actually two engine options, although it's the same engine. There is a T4 variant that pumps out 180 for horsepower, but is only front wheel drive. This is equipped with the T5 that has the same 2 liter turbo four cylinder that actually pumps out 248 horsepower and is paired to an eight speed automatic with all wheel drive. That is good for 23 miles per gallon in the city and 33 on the highway. Right now, I've been averaging around 24 to set, I think 0.8 on the screen, and I've been driving it spiritually, but then also in eco mode. Now, I know it's definitely not made for it, but come on, you can't resist. Now, with the wheelbase being only 106.4 inches long and the overall height being around 65 inches tall and the curb weight of 3,700 pounds, it's actually, actually pretty light and nimble. You can tow around 3,500 pounds, and as long as you have the key in your pocket and say you have a lot of stuff in your hands, just go like this. If it'll work, of course it won't when you need it to. And it will pop right open on the first try. Now, talking about the rear, you'll actually notice there is a lot of space in the XC40 and the seats are power folding. So right now, just to fold the right, you hit the right button and those will drop down or you hold. Yep, you actually have to hold it and they, they hold the left one, and that one goes all the way down. I don't know the reason why that one didn't go all the way down. There is definitely plenty of room then right there if you needed to lay something down, and there's plenty of storage also underneath because Volvo gives you many options for your storage needs. Then again, to close the trunk, you just push that button right there and watch the magic happen. Now inside the XC40, Volvo has always done a really good job with their interiors and in recent years they've actually pretty much stepped it really up and they've kind of been setting the benchmark for a lot of the vehicles. And you'll, but you'll notice in the XC40 they've kind of done some cost cutting and saving measures. And it kind of blends good with it, the interior, but then it kind of doesn't. It looks kind of weird and I'll show you an instance on this. So right here, you'll see it's actually kind of like a weird cloth looking feel. And you'll then it have again comes up to there and it's it's just it's a different feel and it's not like pleather or at least plastic, which it, originally it should be. So it's definitely kind of different in that aspect, although there's nothing else to complain about. That's the only, I think, the cost cutting I've seen within the vehicle. All right, now stepping into the rear of the vehicle, you wouldn't assume that it would be, there would be, it would be scarce for headroom because of the boxing upright look. And actually with this panoramic sunroof, there's no complaints at all. And honestly, if I was to be sitting in the middle and I was, I'd have to, I'm like five, nine, I would have to be maybe around six. I'd have to be very tall to hit my head on that. So that's a really good props. And also the seating material is very nice and the same as it is up there. There's also the beautiful same things that it has to change the air where the airflow goes as you have in the rear. 
although there is no heated seats, but there is a power outlet. Oh, that's a different outlet. I'll actually have to show you guys that because I don't think I've ever seen that. And I forgot that it's child lock, so now I'm going to have to climb somewhere, I think, over this beautiful interior. I'm so sorry, Volvo. Now, following that little child lock mishap, do you guys know if from the factory Volvo comes like that? Because this vehicle only has 500, around, actually, around, I believe, 600 miles. And I don't know why the dealer would put the child lock on. So if you guys know if Volvo does that maybe directly from the factory, let me know in the comments below. And then to turn the child lock off, I believe all you do is something up in here. I don't even know. Ah, probably shouldn't have done that. I believe that is how to turn the child lock off. But then here is the rear end. He has a very nice compartment right there, so for a drink or if you needed to hold something. But then again, look at how beautiful all of this is. I know that the seat looks kind of weird because it makes it look better so I can see. You guys can actually see me when I film. But then again, I was showing you that beautiful diamond cut knurling silver. It's beautiful. Throughout the whole vehicle, it has it. So actually, this is the largest moonroof or panoramic moonroof in Volvo in the class of, out of all the vehicles that is made today. It also is laminated, plus it offers a high level of security and actually it soundproofs it so it makes for a more quiet ride. And it makes, again, like I said, the passenger space, really it opens up back there. It also helps to regulate the temperature because it has this beautiful thing, you know, so you don't want to use the heat. Like in the winter, then the sunlights get right in and then it has its tempered so it won't get hot in the summer. Now let's talk about the digital dash. One thing I've noticed about the digital dash is that it's not really as customizable as one would think it should be. Now you have to access it and to really do anything, you have to hit that button and that's only kind of your options. You have the trip, the media, the phone, and the navigation and that's it. The route is being calculated. You'll notice that the navigation will pop Please up right there. Please proceed to the highlighted route. Sorry about that, which is really nice. But other than that, there's nothing else that you can really do. You would think that when you change the drive modes, which the button is right there from comfort dynamic, maybe it would like go red like it used to in the old, uh, not the old, but the um, older generation S60s when you, oops, sorry, that was eco, but dynamic. See, nothing changes here. I will show you. I'll go right there from eco. And that's the only thing that really changes is that right there. Nothing changes in off-road either. One thing I thought was really cool that Volvo has is a kind of a little trash can right here that all you need to do is just put that right there. Really removable. So all the trash, you just dump it right out. And if you don't want to use that, then you can just have that and it'll be a nice open and big glove box or center console, sorry. See how this baby launches. We are in dynamic mode. I'm going to give it a little bit of brake boost and we'll see if it can do it. So another thing you'll notice that's actually different about the XC40 than all the other Volvos that's made today is there is no, to start the button, to start it, there's usually a little knob right here to twist. But when actually they've switched it to a nice button, which is more, I guess, traditional for today's day and age. All right, right now I'm behind the wheel of the XC40 and the first thing that I've noticed is that it always starts up in comfort mode. No matter what mode you have it in, it always starts up in comfort mode. So right now, the first thing I've noticed is how kind of light the steering is. And yep, the throttle response is, ooh, that was kind of weird, but it's nice and linear and has no problem. There's plenty of visibility, although I've noticed that the windows for the driver and the passenger are a little bit smaller than I was expecting. 
But other than that, the dash layout's gorgeous and really easy to read. Everything is super easy to use once you get to know it. That's one thing because I found myself really looking around and touching the screen a lot when I was driving. And right now you'll see that the auto start stop just kicked in. And that's one thing, let's hear it, just all won't talk. Pretty seamless. And now we're just resuming. So right now, I'm gonna actually go into eco mode and you'll notice that this, the dash changes, but only right to there. And right now we're off. And it's super quiet. I love the layout of everything. I love the new steering wheel. I believe there's a bigger, I think the airbag is bigger in the XC40 and I mean XC60 and XC90. Here, I'll take. And right now we just started right up. It's, I've no, maybe um, other systems are a little bit like quicker to start up. I noticed that the Volkswagen Jetta, that starts right up like it was never even off. So right now we're just coming up to a stop sign and definitely plenty of visibility and everything. No, the car shuts off again. All right, there's one thing I've definitely noticed that I've figured out that I kind of don't like. Is this truck gonna let me go? All right, thank you. Is the auto start stop. It goes off way too much. It's like the lightest touch on the brake pedal immediately and the car turns off. I don't like that. I like in the Jetta where you actually have to firmly put your foot on the brake. So it's because it was just starting and stopping the whole time that I didn't like that at all. So right now I'm actually gonna show you guys one of the coolest things I think that this vehicle has, even though I know probably a lot of vehicles have now, this is, it'll park for itself. So you find it and it's park in, I believe, scanning right. Now I believe you have to be around other cars. So it gives kind of like, um, I don't know, a reference, but it gets really close because I've tried it before. So let's see, so I'm just, it's just scanning right now. Oops, stop, slot found, stop to park. So look around. So that's, so it has, okay, so it's taking over right now. Oh, don't wanna hit that person. See now it gets so close to that here. Let me, sorry, I know, but you guys will see it. So it just gets really close to that truck, but I know that it's not gonna hit it right there so now it says parking stop and put in forward gear so now i gotta go to drive and i love it and it has this little like kind of thing to show you your progress so right there when it goes and then i know to put it in reverse it's really helpful but you're gonna see how well this actually parks itself even though we're super close to that car and i don't even know if he would be able to get out could get into their vehicle and look I will go and open my door just to make sure yes they could but it would be let's see it'd be kind of hard but I could definitely get in oh yeah actually you know what I misspoke someone can easily get in and the Volvo did a very good job parking itself so this is Volvo's semi autonomous driving or pilot assist you know that it is active because of the green steering wheel right there and actually it does very well i've noticed that it definitely moves the steering wheel a lot more and kind of shimmies it around if you're holding it other than other systems like volkswagens or subarus but it's very it's pretty easy to use and it's very effective, although you can see there was a little bit of swerving, but as you'll notice, you actually don't really need to put your hand on the steering wheel. This is one of the like systems that I've seen that it can go the longest without me touching it. So far it's been, see right there, apply steering, and that was after about 40 seconds of this being live. So now you'll see it just kind of jiggled the steering wheel right there. And we kind of have a bigger turn coming up. So I'm just going to get ready just in case it can't make it. Although it is doing very well and is staying right in the lane. I'm trusting it. I'm going to let it do it. Wow. You'll notice, see, there's little minute. Okay. Now we'll see. This is kind of a, oh, wow. 
Oh, it's definitely over that white line a little bit, as you can see. But wow, that did really well. I'm very impressed with this system so far. Let's see how well it does through town. Right now, I'm actually approach, approaching a XC70 right now, which is my vehicle. And the reason I have this, because it's the loaner. And I haven't had to touch anything. And you'll see right now they're slowing down and they're taking a right apply steering. That's it. So they've taken their right. Okay, it slowed down a lot more than it needed to, definitely. But, all right, we're resuming. Come on, you can go a little bit faster. There we go. So. I'm sure you're probably wondering, as am I, when I watch these car reviews, is what is it like to live with? And honestly, I can tell you one thing, this shifter, kind of annoying. Oh, and you'll see it, that's, I like the, the sensors, they're really helpful, but they're kind of just, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if I'd need to pay extra for it. But other than that, I really like the car. It's super smooth to drive. It drives really well. It's it's not fast, although it's definitely not slow. I believe the zero to 60 is 6.3 seconds. But, you know, it handles pretty well for what it is. Right now, we will go into dynamic and we'll mat it. And I'm not thrown back in my seat, but it kind of has a nice shift sound. I don't know what it is, but it sounds really good when it shifts. We'll go into Mexico right now. Far, oh, oh no, this person is actually turning. So we will go straight. And yeah, you'll hear that, that's a nice shift sound. So we're coming into some kind of tight corners and it's planted, yes.